Okay, here we're going to perform row operations. Row 3 minus negative 5 times row 1 plus row 3 on these two problems, these two matrices here. So for number 38, if I want to do negative 5 times row 1, that means I need to multiply each component in row 1 by a negative 5. So 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. Then I'm going to write row 3 underneath. So 3, 2, 0, 6 is written underneath. And then I'm going to add these two components together, corresponding components. So negative 20 plus 3 is negative 17. 40 plus 2 is 42. Negative 10 plus 0 is negative 10. And negative 25 plus 6 is negative 19. So how do we write the answer? We write the answer as a matrix, and we're only replacing row 3. So row 1 will look exactly as it did before. Row 2 will look exactly as it did before. And row 3 will be replaced with the components that we just found. Now, let's do the same thing for 39. So for negative 5 times row 1, I'm multiplying each component in row 1 by a negative 5, which results in these um, components there. Then I'm going to add row 3 underneath that. So I've just rewritten the components for row 3. And then now when I combine them, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. 25 plus negative 3 is 22. And 55 plus a negative 2 is 33. So then we're going to write our answer as a matrix. Row 1 will stay exactly the same. Row 2 will stay exactly the same and row three will re be replaced with the elements or the components that we just found. Now, the next problem, set of problems, wants us to solve the system for D, DX, DY, and DZ if applicable using Kramer's rule and find the solution to the problem. So the first thing I've done for number 40 is I've taken the matrix that was given here and then we wrote it into its augmented matrix form. So the coefficients of X, the coefficients of Y, and then the constant on the other side of that bar. Now, we're going to start setting up our determinant. So for D by itself, it's just the coefficient matrix by itself. So only this part of the augmented matrix. So three, two, four, negative six. And then how do you find the determinant? You're going to start circling your diagonals. And so since this is a two by two matrix, I only need two numbers in my diagonal. And if I start here, I have this one. If I start there, I have that one. Now, the ones going downward to the right are going to be positive or the same sign, those products. The ones going upward to the right are going to be the opposite or the negative of those products. So when I multiply 3 times negative 6, I get negative 18. And that positive in this negative 18 is going to keep it as a negative 18. But then when I multiply this product here, I get an 8. But I have to um, use the opposite sign for that 8, so it'll be minus 8. So then in the end, I end up with negative 26. Now, for us to find dx, what that means is you're going to replace the coefficients of x with the constants. So instead of the coefficients 3 and 4 in this column, you're going to have the constants 4 and 7 in that column. So there's my constants in the x column, and the y column is still the coefficients. And then how do I determine the matrix, the determinant for this one? Multiply that way multiply that way. Just remember the ones going upward are going, to, as you go to the right, will have a negative. So I get negative 24 and then I get 14. So we end up with negative 38 here. Now last one is dy and so we're going to replace the y coefficients with the um, constants. So instead of 2 and negative 6, we're going to have 4 and 7 in this column. And then the x coefficients are still there. And how do I find the determinant of this? 
we're going to do three and four. Just remember that when you multiply this way, you should have a minus there. So this will be 21 and that will be 16. So I end up with 21 minus 16, which is five. Okay, we do not need Z because we don't have any Zs in here. So we don't need DZ. DZ is not applicable for number 40. Okay, and then now we're gonna continue and use Kramer's rule to go ahead and um, solve for X and Y. So for X, we get DX over D. <clears throat> Excuse me which is negative 38 over negative 26, which ends up positive and we end up with, I believe 19 over 13, but let's verify here. So we get negative 38 over negative 26. And yes, we end up with a positive 19 over 13. Now for y, we get dy over d, which is going to be dy is 5 and d is negative 26. These will not reduce, so I end up with negative 5 over 26. And then I just need to write that as a point for the solution. So for my solution, it's going to be the x coordinate comma the y coordinate. And this is the solution, okay? And if they specifically ask for these different components, remember that D is negative 26, DX is negative 38, and DY is five, okay? Now let's go ahead and try to do the same thing for 41, okay? So we're gonna try to find D first. And so then we're going to need the determinant of just the coefficient matrix. So three, six, negative three, seven, 16, one, four, negative two, and negative 24. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did before. The problem is, is that I do have the three by three. So there's my three components there. But in order for me to do this one, I'm missing a component there. And then in order for me to do this one, I'm actually missing two components here. So how do we figure those out? We just rewrite the first two. So I'm gonna rewrite this column here with three, seven, and four, and then six, 16, and negative two. Once I do that, I now have enough information to figure this out. So let's go in the opposite direction. This does not have three. This one has three. This has three. And this diagonal has three. So remember, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm doing the pink, I'm going to have pluses in between. And when I'm doing the greens, I'm going to have minuses in between. So let's see what we end up with here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Three times 16 times negative 24 is actually a negative 1152. Then six times one times four is 24. Negative three times seven times negative two is a 42. Oops, I put these in the wrong order. That's what happened here. This is negative 152. This should be the positive 24, and this should be the positive 42. Now we'll go on to the other numbers. So we get four times 16 times negative three. So we get negative 192. Here we get negative two times one times three. We get a negative six. And then here we have negative 24 
times seven times six, we get a negative one zero zero eight. So let's see what we end up with here. It's negative one one five two plus twenty four plus forty two plus one ninety two plus six and plus one zero zero eight. So let's see negative one one five two plus twenty four plus forty two plus one ninety two plus six plus zero zero eight. We end up with one hundred and twenty there. So D is equal to 120. Now we have to do something similar for dx. So for dx, we're going to replace the x column with the constants. So 3, negative 7, and 34. We're still going to use the coefficients for y, and we're still going to use the coefficients for z. And then the same technique as before, rewrite the first two columns. And then circle your diagonals. So this diagonal, oops, that's not the right way. This diagonal times this diagonal and this diagonal. I'm trying to make it straight there. And then going the other way would be this triple, this triple, and this triple. Remember when we multiply those, excuse me for the plane, I do live by Randolph Air Force Base and during the day they always do um, runs with their, with their planes, so I just got to make do. Okay, this, so here we're going to have a number here, it'll be the same sign, then we're going to add what we get for this one, and then we're going to add what we get for that one, and then when it comes to the green, we're actually going to subtract this value subtract this value, and subtract the last value. So let's see what product we get for the first triple. We get 3 times 16 times negative 24, so negative 1152. Here we get 6 times 1 times 34, so that's 24. And here we get um, negative 3 times negative 7 times negative 2, we get negative 42. Now going in the other direction, 34 times 16 times negative 3, negative 16, 32. Here we'll get negative 6, and here we'll get negative 24 times negative 7 times 6, we get 1008. So, Let's go ahead and um, work this out. So this is going to be a negative 152, a positive 204, a negative 42, a positive 1632, a positive 6, and a negative 1008. So what does that turn out to be? it ends up being a negative 360. So dx is negative 360. Now we're going to do the same for dy. So this time we're going to take the coefficients of x the same, but for y we're going to use the constants, and then we're going to take the coefficients of z. And we're going to do the same process as before. So if you excuse the planes in the background, I don't really need to talk all of this out every single time because it's kind of getting repetitive. But those planes do zoom by and get kind of loud.
typo there. So I'm going to go back in there and change my 81 to an 84. There we go. Positive 120. Now we do have to do the same thing for DZ. Um, but I will need another sheet of paper. So for DZ, we're going to do sort of the same thing, right? So for DZ, we're going to take the determinant, but the X coefficients will stay the same. The Y coefficients will stay the same. And the Z coefficients will be replaced with the constants. And so then I'll rewrite the first two columns. And then start doing my diagonals. And then in green. And so then what I get will be one triple in pink plus another triple in pink plus a third triple in pink. Then I'll subtract a triple in green, subtract the second, and then subtract the third. So let's see what values we get here. Here we end up with negative 240. So we have D. D is 120, right? We have DX, that's negative 360. We have DY, that's 120. And we now have DZ, which is negative 240. So if they're asking you for each of those components, you do have those values here on your paper. But if you want the solution, you need to find the ratio dx over d. dx is negative 360, and d is a positive 120. So that ratio ends up becoming a negative 3. For y, we want dy over d. dy is a 120 over d, which is a 120, and you get positive 1. For z, you have dz over d. dz is negative 240. d is 120. And that reduces down negative 2. So what is the solution here? It's negative 3 for x, 1 for y, and negative 2 for z.